welcome to our short video series. Venom S is a fantastic sports car and uses the S-Type Jaguar as a donor vehicle. This is the first in the kit car industry in the UK, so I thought it would be useful to do a video showing how to harvest the donor parts to be used. All the work you see was carried out by me single-handed. The only special equipment I used was the crane and the body lines. You can hire a workshop crane, which will do the same job, and the dollies, although useful, are not essential. The total time taken was around 20 hours. I hope you enjoyed watching the videos and if you do have any questions, please drop me an email. Okay, so we've lowered the vehicle back down now onto its uh, axle dolly. And now the engine compartment is clear. We've got uh, plenty of access now to get at the remaining items that we need to, we need to remove from the car. If we take off um, the header tank expansion bottle for the coolant system, we'll then be able to remove the windscreen wiper linkage, and then the next job will be to remove the booster, brake booster, and the pedal box. Okay, we need to remove and detach the bonnet release cable. But, uh, the, the, obviously there's two of these sections but you can uh, release the cable here and then just simply pull the cable back around through the bulkhead and um, if you remember the bonnet release cable is detached to that plate that sits just underneath the, um, the lower section of the dashboard on the driver's side so I'll just disconnect that and uh, just wiggle and pull that cable through until you've got that, that piece disconnected and then that can be reconnected back up to this and we just put that on one side um, the, these things just you just need to you just need to wiggle them and they'll, they'll, they'll come apart that are sort of a, a hook arrangement that uh, needs to move th move through a certain angle for them, for them to be able to come apart there we go that's that one done okay still in the bonnet release cable this is it's held on by a series of uh, steel clips which are riveted on so it goes up down here comes up round the forward power distribution box here you can see these riveted clips that hold it on and then it disappears down here through a grommet down under the uh, in the front bulkhead okay we're inside the car now and we are going to remove um, the pedal box so we've removed this lower cover from the dashboard which is held on with a couple of screws and some clips which uh, you just have to pry loose a bit fiddly to get off um, you can undo the uh, wires to the um, bonnet and fuel cap release and the headlamp aim adjustment and then we'll have a look at how we're going to get this pedal box out. Okay, so having removed that plastic cover, you'll see there's a, a metal plate which also holds the bonnet release that's held in by several 8mm bolts. So we're going to remove that, and again, that's going to improve our access to the pedal box mountings. Okay, so we've removed the plate, and there's a small ventilation duct that runs behind it which you can pull away and discard. Obviously, the vision behind here is not great. Uh, Right, connectors for the electronic throttle here. We need to remove those so that we can move, remove the the uh, the throttle if we're going to use an electronic throttle on the engine again. So there's a couple of M10 bolts on there. We just take that away. That's easy. Okay, to give better access to be able to remove the pedal box, we're going to need to remove the steering column. We don't need the steering column. We only need the lower half of it, but we're just going to have to remove it so that we can get access to get the pedal box out. So there is. On the lower half of the column, there's a, there's a pinch bolt there. If you undo that, we should be able to uh, remove the lower bearing here and then be able to take out the lower half of the steering column, which we need to retain. Um, and then the column itself has four bolts here. It's quite a substantial piece of kit because it's an airbag technology column. 
So there are four bolts that we need to undo and then that whole thing should just drop out as a complete unit. So let's do that. That's Having removed the four nuts holding the steering column assembly in place and disconnected any electrical connectors, the column assembly can be removed and set aside. We will need to recover the column switches from the column assembly later. Okay, so the other thing I've done is I've undone the two 10mm nuts on the bottom of the uh, lower steering column. There's the bit that was onto the pinch bolt for the upper part of the column. So we simply need to pull this through the bulkhead now. Three from the engine compartment. That's, we need to retain this bit because we need this to go onto our car. We've removed the part of the pedal box that holds the clutch and brake pedal switches and we can now see the four 13mm nuts that secure the brake booster to the pedal box. There are two upper bolts not shown which further secure the pedal box to the bulkhead. Before removing the brake booster in the engine compartment you will need to remove the clevis pin attaching the pedal to the brake push rod. The clutch master cylinder is integral with the pedal box so be sure to disconnect the rubber feed pipe from the brake reservoir in the engine compartment and also the clutch hard line at the master cylinder by removing the U-clip and pulling the joints apart. The pedal box can then be removed from inside the car. This part of the console here is just held onto the bottom with clips. So you just get a very broad trim remover just pry it up on both sides, this starts to become free. Okay. After you've unclipped and removed the top section of the dashboard of the centre console, the next job is to remove the vent that clips in here. This just this just pops out, it's a plastic trim removal tool and that will just pop out. When that pops out, you'll be able to see two screws There's one, the back, there's one on the other side as well. And you'll be able to put a long screwdriver down and be able to access that through, through that vent hole there. Okay. We can now see the handbrake mounting bolts. There are further two bolts on the side of the transmission tunnel next to the seat. This shows the handbrake primary cable exiting the rear bulkhead through a grommet. This should pull through and the handbrake lever and primary cable can be lifted from the car. Remove the front doors so that we can retrieve the hinges. We need to remove a few of the bolts at the rear of the wing so we can pull the wing out at its rear edge and get sufficient clearance to remove the hinge attachment bolts. Okay, so up under the wing, hopefully you can see, there are two mounting bolts. Upper one there, lower one down there. Undo those, we should be able to pull the wing back and give us better access to get the door bolts out. Okay, so as you can see now, once you've uh, remove the top wing bolts and the side bolts you can just pull the wing back a little bit and you've got access to those um, hinge bolts after removing the rear seat squab you'll see two access panels remove the one on the driver's side then detach the quick release fuel pipe connections and electrical connections and unscrew the large plastic retaining ring This shows the retaining ring removed and the top cover which seals onto the tank. Inside the tank, the pump sits in a swirl pot which clips into a moulding in the tank and is simple to unclip. There is also a float for the sender, a hose connecting the pump assembly to the top cover. So a bit fiddly to remove but straightforward. This shows the pump assembly and swirl pot we've just removed from the tank. We can now separate the parts we need and discard the rest. Okay, so here are the bits we're interested in now. The 
top electrical connector that goes out into the external loom. We've got the pump assembly there in the middle. And we've got the little uh, swell pot on the left hand side. So what we'll do is we'll assemble the pump back into With the screws that we, that we used we took out, got five millimeter screws, and then we'll take a, a takeoff off this out to our fuel line to supply the engine. Um, this will be used, so we can blank this off. When you've removed this top plate and you've taken all the bits off that you need, disconnected everything, that needs to go back onto the fuel tank, the fuel connectors in, so that you're leaving the fuel tank in the car all nicely sealed up. Okay, so what we've got laid out on the floor here now is all the parts that we needed to salvage off the Jaguar. <coughs> so we've got rear suspension, subframe, the prop shaft there in the background, we've got um, both from left to right we've got the door hinge and lock assemblies, windscreen wiper, heater motor, radiator expansion tank, brake booster and master cylinder, then on the floor going from the right we've got the handbrake cable, door locks, various rubber grommets, the bonnet cable release mechanism and the rear boot uh, lock and release mechanism. And over on this side we've got obviously the engine transmission front suspension complete there and then we've got next to the brake booster the pedal box then the radiator complete with the fan and fan shroud. In front of that we've got the um, power steering oil radiator and in front of that is the um, swell pot and fuel pump. And just off to the left is the bat battery earth cable and the horns. Make sure that anything that's electrical that you're going to use, like the master cylinder, has its electrical connector on it. Same goes for the fan motor. There we go.